I was born uh, in Dallas, Texas to a 17-year-old girl, never met my father. I was born Lance Gunderson. My mom remarried when I was three to a guy named Armstrong. I became Lance Armstrong. Like a lot of young kids in Texas, I tried all the mainstream sports, and by the time I was 14, I was one of the top swimmers in the state. Swimming, swimming was my original uh, sport, still a sport I love to this day. There was a professional triathlon in Dallas, and I was 15 years old, and he said, why don't you just turn pro and race with the pros? Uh, I continued to race professionally at, uh, as a 15 and 16 year old, traveling all over the world. I had the, you know, one of the worst diagnoses uh, that Dr. Einhorn had ever seen. And when I was diagnosed, I was living in Austin, Texas, which of course now the world views as like the coolest, smartest city in America, uh, or a lot of people do. Um, but back then we didn't have uh, a medical school, we didn't have a, a specific cancer hospital, we had just sort of 7-Eleven depots of oncology. Went to Houston, talked to MD Anderson, and then I eventually ended up in Indiana and met the legend, Dr. Larry Einhorn, but I knew that I wasn't stopping until I was finally in the place that A, I thought would cure me, but more importantly, B, if I, if I wasn't going to be cured and I wasn't going to live, I would have known that that was my best shot. I had probably a, a dozen golf ball sized tumors in the lungs, I had two lesions on the brain. Einhorn's uh, regimen of platinum based therapy was, was very successful. I could look at tumor markers on a sheet and, and read them that they were coming down. And so I felt like, as scared as I was, I also had an athlete's mentality and, and, and saw that I was putting points on the board. You know, we built an organization uh, that I started right when I was diagnosed. Uh, we, you know, our goal was to maybe we were going to put on a bike ride in Austin. What if we raised five thousand dollars? Golly gee, could we give that back? Could we did somehow uh, do something good with that money? Um, well, just a few short years later, we win the tour. Then the donations start rolling in, and then in 2004, the yellow wristband is created. Uh, we sold, I think, to date, 85 million yellow wristbands for a dollar a piece. Uh, and, and then in 2012, I get the call that that uh, that I'm out. And so, you know, but at that point, we had just crossed through uh, $500 million, so half a billion dollars raised. Uh, we had served 3 million people. And, but to get that call was, uh, that, was, that, was that was one of the hardest ones. I did the same thing that everybody did. Mm -hmm. that, that's a fact. We did nothing different than anybody else, but I was very different. I was the, the, the face and the brand of the sport. I was the cancer survivor. I had this huge army of people behind me. I was combative. I would, I would, you know, press conferences many times at the tour were this big. I mean, the room was this big. You'd get questions from all corners. I'm sitting there thinking, who is, who is this asshole trying to take me on? And, and this room as a press conference is not a competition. The competition is over, right? The race is over. You have won, right? So uh, there's... Looking back on it, um, just handled it terribly. Uh, look, the entire brouhaha cost me 105 million bucks, right? Between lawsuits, legal fees, loss of endorsements, um, settlements, and so that stung. What happened first was I lost what I thought was half of my friends, right? Half, half of the room, if, if, if pre-Oprah, this whole room, we're all friends, the day after Oprah, like, you guys are gone and you guys are still here, right? It's devastating to look over and see an empty side of a room. But it's, as much as that sucks and as hard as that is to see, you look over here and you see these folks that are like, I'm here. All right, now, now we go. Yeah. You can't go from, nobody, not me, not anybody in this room, not anybody in the world, can go from hero to zero overnight. Uh, and not suffer from PTSD, which is what, is what I certainly went through. I leaned into my family, I leaned into my own health and well-being. If, if, this, if my downfall happened 20 years ago, and you couldn't buy mics, and you couldn't upload a show to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or YouTube or whatever, I'm toast. Nobody's calling again. But we're living in a day and age when anybody can create content, and so it empowered me to go out there and do it. When I started the shows, I didn't think anybody would listen. And you all clapped about podcasts. You know what that means. I mean, that you are downloading the show. So we measure uh, how we're doing based on downloads, right? And the more downloads you get, the more advertisers you get, and, and off you go. And so once this started to roll, I thought, hang on a second. I see what's going on here. Uh, this is a flywheel, right? This is a flywheel of we have the audience, we have the credibility in this space, and 
let's go raise a fund. So five years ago, I launched an early stage venture fund. We raised 60 million bucks and have 20 companies in, that, in, uh, in our portfolio there. It's called Next Ventures. We've done things like Aura Ring and Outside and SteadyMD and Vital Bio and um, it's going very well. We're raising our second fund, which will be about twice as big. Uh, and I've watched my own life in the last 10 years um, where I've been, I've been able to, 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 to reimagine and recreate and, and, and reemerge. So know that I'm not for everybody, right? It's, this is a 50-50 game. any of us. <laughs> right, but it's a 50-50 game for me for the rest of my life, and that is okay. I'm totally cool with that. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not trying to say that any excuses or anything, but I'm, I'm glad that I've lived this really complicated life and, and managed to, you know, in my own sort of way, come out the other end. Thank you, Lance. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody.